In this last video, we're going to be talking about some generic patterns, kind of briefly, to help you understand what to expect when you're working through problems like this. First, we're going to look at a collection of three different recursions that are all very similar. They're all a chip and conquer style recursion. Chip and conquer. They are called as such because you're taking the size of the input and reducing it by a fixed amount by subtracting. And the difference between each of these implementations there is just the cost of the non-recursive work. If you look at the complexities that correspond to these functions, they're the same as the non-recursive work but multiplied by n. This is typical of these chip and conquer style functions. Our next collection are all recursive calls that look like the above but are dividing. People would call these typically divide and conquer. For these, the pattern is maybe less obvious, but remembering what we talk about when we did our other example, which is right below here, the master theorem as an idea can help us. So the one, the ones of these where the the non-recursive work remains constant at each level of the recursion tree obey the same rules as before. So problems like this one here, the cost of the non-recursive work is constant. So the runtime is that non-recursive work times log of n. In this case, that's just theta of log of n. In the next example, the non-recursive work decreases. So the complexity is the same as the non-recursive work. In the example afterwards, the non-recursive work decreases again. So again, the complexity is the same as the non-recursive work. The pattern continues for the various other ones. And we can even lump in these examples down here and these examples down here. All of these examples are divide and conquer type examples and all of them can be reasoned through, reasoned through with the master theorem that we talked about before. So there are a lot of different divide and conquer things there. Patterns may or may not appear and there's other examples we looked at down here to further help you generalize. Now let's look at these problems that have multiple chip and conquers. All of these examples here have multiple chip and conquer style recursions. And if we look, each of them is exponential. You can expect this for anything that has multiple chip and conquers. This is what you might expect. There probably are ways to get around this, but I am unaware of them. So if you have multiple chip and conquers, you expect an exponential lower bound. This means that when you're working through problems, you can use that to your advantage to help save yourself some work. This is not meant as a cheat sheet. This is just meant as a way to help you quickly check if you performed your analysis correctly. You're still going to always need to do the analysis unless I tell you you don't need to. So you may want to have these in the back of your mind as a check, but they are not a be all and end all. I still expect you to be able to do the method of substitution, and I still expect you to be able to do recursion trees. But this can help you check your work and can be a useful frame of reference to have.